welcome all to this tutorial. Today I will show you how you can create a passwordless SSH login. Why should you do this? Well, to be quite to be frank and brief, uh, passwords are insecure. Let me put it so. Why? Well, you know, they can be guessed. That's the first flaw. Second flaw is that you actually have to type it in and whoever is looking from behind your back or whoever is nearby can hear you typing so they can either figure out so they can literally hear the amount of keys you t you press on your keyboard and they will know the length of your password or they can actually see you typing it in they don't have to catch all the characters but if you keep typing it in every day and if somebody's there in the office they will eventually see it and know it and if you use that password on, on some of your other services as well uh, that can be a security nightmare security scenario nightmare, let me put it so. Anyway, in order for us to avoid such inconvenient situations, we will configure uh, our SSH server to permit passwordless logins via keys. So let's go, let's go over to our SSH server, which is CentOS. I will uh, go ahead and log in. And I'm sure I have a few stuffs running here. Okay, that was me testing these sort of things out. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at our configuration file in order to have a look at the SSH configuration file, SS the SSHD configuration file. Just type in uh, vim etsy ssh sshd config and here you can configure a lot of things and I mean a lot of things. Uh, you can actually change the port so by just deleting this, by just deleting this uh, bar and typing in a different port number, a different port number, you can actually change the port here if you like, but I will just leave 22. Usually when it goes over the internet, people tend to change the port. Feel free to do so. Uh, down below, I have also changed a few other settings. I have these two set on yes, RSA authentication and public key authentication, uh, authorized files is set there, and I have also disabled the root login. Not sure where it is, let me just go ahead and find uh, uh, find it. Uh, okay, so root... Mm -hmm. No, it's, uh, it's at the top. Has to, ah, there we go. So permit root login. It says no here. If, usually it will say uh, yes, and it will be written out like this, yes, and there should be a bar here as well, so it will be commented out. What you need to do is remove the bar and type in no, because we do not want anybody to be able to log into our server as brute, rather instead we want them to be able to log into our server as a regular user and then be able to switch to root if, if there is a need for it, of course. Anyway, uh, I've done those modifications for myself. You can do some other ones as well, depending on your needs. But as I said, you won't. Most of these things you will not like. Ninety percent of the things in here you will not require for the Red Hat Certified System Administrator. You can also disable password authentication, but I would advise against it for the time being. Instead of yes, just type in no. Anyway. I will go ahead and quit. I'm not going to do any modifications here because I've already changed the file myself. After you have done all of this, uh, you just use this command in order to restart the server and that is all you really need to do, just to make sure that all of it gets applied. Let's go back to our Red Hat client now and from here we are going to attempt a login. Let's just exit root because we don't want to be doing this as root and now we are going to attempt to log in first make preparations for a passwordless login and then attempt a passwordless login. So what do we need to do? We need to type in SSH and after that key gen press enter. You can just go ahead and press enter here. It says enter file in which to save the key. You have the default file. Uh, the default file is just fine. Uh, for me it says uh, that it already exists. Would, you li would I like to overwrite it? You most likely won't get this part because I've done this a few times before and uh, the keys have stayed there. So I'm just going to say uh, yes, 
overwrite, enter passphrase. Now I'm not going to use a passphrase in addition to my in addition to my pub, in addition to my keys. So I'm just going to go ahead and press enter twice, and that is literally all you need to do in order to create a key. Now creating a key is not enough. You need to import you need to import the key onto the server. How do you do that? Well, you type in ssh hyphen copy id and then you need to type in the ser uh, the user and the server so 192.168.1.101 now I need to type in the password is it gonna work? permissions denied, please try again, what? oh come on do I have caps look on or something? I don't think I do. Let's go ahead and try this again. Ah, of course not, of course not. I love it, I love it when I make these silly mistakes with spelling. Okay. There we go. So it has went through without any problems, as you just saw. Uh, you should be rather careful when typing these things in to make sure that they are correct. Now we will do as the program basically suggests. Now try logging into the machine with SSH and then this uh, creator at and the IP address. So SSH creator at 192.168.1.101 and we are prompted with a password again so we are doing something wrong here something is not right what do you suppose could be the case so let's go ahead and type in the password permission denied please try again why 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 are you doing this <laughs> of course of course I, I truly am a genius I am a genius. Please give pay tribute or something of a kind. Agent admitted failure to sign in using the key. And this is going to be an error that you're going to get. I have gotten it. I've read through the forums or something of a kind, mainly due to the uh, key configuration on the server side. So you most likely had a key that was previously there or something of a kind on the server, the portion of which has stayed there or something went wrong during the key import phase and now the agent is admitting failure because it can't handle it. I've made a quick patch for it, quick workaround. Not sure how well is it gonna work now, but let's see if we will actually succeed. Oh, come on. Echo pretty much nothing into home creator dot ssh authorized keys excellent so now that file is empty and I have restarted this reset the service as well let's go ahead and repeat the procedure once again and import the keys to see what happens okay now we have imported the keys again let's see if it works agent admitted failure using the key Hmm. Let's go back again. Let's see what we can actually do with this. Echo. Service SSH do restart. And let's see if I actually have anything else left in that file. Okay. So ls. Uh, cat authorized keys. Nope. There is nothing in that file. It's, it's empty. Well, let's go ahead and remove it all together. So RM authorized keys. Yes, and let's do service SSHD restart. I'm doing this simply to save you a bit of time on your uh, in the during the pro during your own process of this uh, during your own repet uh, during your own session of doing this uh, so you don't have to ask me rather instead you can see the troubleshooting process yourselves 
So let's go ahead and actually uh, generate another key as well. Key gen. Okay, go through that. Yes, please overwrite it. Enter fast phrase. No fast phrase. Uh, now we need to import the key. Uh, copy it actually over to the server. Excellent. Now that is done. Let's go ahead and attempt to log in. Agent admitted failure. Okay, so after searching for it a little bit on the net, I found out that that was actually an SSH error, that this was an SSH error, and in spite of everything, I have actually decided to incorporate everything into this tutorial, uh, just because I believe that you two will probably encounter this error, and I would really love it if you actually were able to see the solution in the tutorial, just in case you encounter an error. If you don't encounter an error, great for you, but at least you know uh, what the solution for it is and it might serve you at a certain point of time. Go ahead and type in SSH, uh, add, press enter, and there you go, identity added. The solutions which I've tried previously was due to my belief that I have done some that I have misconfigured it or something of a kind, but no, not really. Everything was fine. However, SSH does have this error that occurs from time to time and it is necessary for you to be to know how to fix it and that is why I've chosen to incorporate this into this tutorial as opposed to just cutting out this part with great ease and not including it. If you do encounter some errors here uh, feel free to go into the discussions into the discussions section I am always around and I try to answer all questions as fast as I can. So uh, let's go ahead and clear the screen now and attempt a login Okay, so this is me testing out the SCP. Oops, there we go. So we have managed to log in without any difficulties. We are now a user creator on our SSH server. Okay, now since we've done this, I would like to show you one final thing in relate that is related to SSH. I would like to show you how you can copy, uh, copy pretty much anything from one point to another. Uh, this is uh, reg this. This can be done regardless of the distance and of the size. For example, this is something that people do uh, on, like, they, they create something on their home machines, like they create a web, they create a website, uh, or something of a kind, and then they copy it over to their cloud somewhere where the site becomes alive. You can also copy your entire SQL database. It is all dependent on you. Uh, you cannot, you can combine SCP with tar. The, I've showed you how to use tar in the previous tutorials, so you can create one huge tar ball. Tar, you can create a tar ball of 100 gigabytes or something of a kind, and then you can use the SCP command to basically uh, copy pretty much anything from any point to any other point in a secure, encrypted fashion, which is uh, very useful and very nice. So, uh, I am now on my server over here, and I will go ahead and enter desktop. I do believe that I have a file here, it's called example. Now I will copy example from this, from my server, from the CentOS SSH server onto my Red Hat client. In order for us to do that, well let me just show you that I don't really have anything in the path. I want, to, I will copy it into downloads and let me just show you that I don't really have anything in downloads. So, well, I do have some things here, but I definitely don't have a file under the name of example. So, let's go ahead and uh, copy the file. Let me see if I have a command memorized here. I do. Ah, there we go. So this is the syntax for uh, copying, fi copying local files to a remote site. I would advise you to go onto the net and just type in SCP usage examples using your favorite search engine. 
uh, there are examples are numerous depending on what your purpose is but it's fairly similar always it doesn't change that much it just allows you to copy things from one end to another uh, in an and it allows for the encryption layer to exist so that nobody can see uh, what even though somebody could possibly capture traffic in between they couldn't actually see what it was because it's encrypted and let me just go ahead and press enter well before I do I'm sure you understand this is a file here this is a command SCP this is a local file I could have also typed in here uh, oops I could have also typed in front of the example something like this uh, path to the file I could have also used this and specified a path to the file but since I am already in the desktop folder and the file is there doesn't really matter I can just go ahead and use it like this then I specify the username on the remote site I specified the IP address and I also have the directory so you put a colon here and then you specify a directory on the remote site where uh, in which folder do you want to copy this file simple as that uh, just go ahead and press enter it will prompt you for a password press enter Permission denied. Okay, we get my passwords. Excellent. So there you go. The file has indeed been copied. Let's go over to this uh, to this other screen and type in ls, and you can see that the example is there. Uh, let me just show it like this to you. There you go. It's right there. I have managed to copy it. As I said, the file size doesn't matter. You could copy an entire database in this fashion. Anyway. I bid you all farewell and a ton load of luck.